back to the chit chat box with Nerica and Rebecca. And today we have us a very special guest. Mm -hmm. Can you tell them who we have today, B? We have Miss Ariel Moore. And if you don't know, she was a makeup artist. She still is because she still has it within her heart. And um, before I, you know, start glorifying her because you know this is my daughter. Uh, I'm going to let her tell a little about herself. So if you don't mind, can you please let the people know a little bit about your hidden talents and who you are? So my name is Ariel, also known as Ariel vs. Cupcake. On social media platforms, I am a digital content creator um, transitioning into being a lifestyle content creator. Um, I worked at MAP for six years. Um, I model sometimes. I dabble and dabble in the fashion world, um, and I make YouTube videos. So I make natural hair YouTube videos. Well, basically like beauty video um, videos. And yeah. How did they find you on YouTube, ma'am? Um, Ariel Cupcake on YouTube and Ariel versus Cupcake on Instagram. And when she say versus, she mean like the B yes. and the S. Yes. For those that don't know. Now, um, can you tell when you say fashion, what all have you done in the fashion world? Um, have you been to any fashion shows, anything like that? Yes, so I worked with a um, brand, which they are from Louisville, but they are like worldwide. Um, they have shows in Dubai. Um, the Beautiful. brand is called Flume, and it is um, black. They're a black brand, uh, black designers. Um, so yeah, I've modeled for them. I've attended New York Fashion Week shows. Um, I do a lot of work with Pretty Little Things. Um, oh, I've seen them on the internet before. Yeah, as far as like marketing and stuff for them. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. But now, I'm trying to do, well I'm not trying to, I'm going to be doing like a lot of stuff with, um, dang, I wonder if I can say it, Nike. Good job. Um, Good show. Look, yeah. so, <laughs> well, even I didn't know yeah, that. I'm doing, I'm doing some uh, different things now. I'm branding myself a little different now. That's so. Yeah. It's all about growth and evolution, right? You've been at it for a minute. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, I know how you got started, but maybe, you know, she and a lot of other people would like to know how you got started. What motivated you to first want to start doing makeup? So, I lived in New York. And I was friends with this girl named Tiffany, well, this woman named Tiffany. And um, we went into a MAC store, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know how MAC is. Like, New York is busy, and it's just so, like, theatrical. Like, everything is just drawn with New York. So I walked in this MAC store, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what in the world? Like, all these girls that dressed up. It's just like a big party. So I'm like, what in the world? I want to do this. So I said I want to do makeup. And I started doing makeup. And I can draw a little bit. I get that from my mom. She can draw a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that has something to do with it. So I would just practice on myself and um, on my friends and family. And then I just started like that. Mainly, I want to just be known as like just lifestyle. Just monetizing my life. You yes. know? Um, so everything but to answer your question i am attending fashion week next week so Sweet. i have a few things lined up for that so with your with your makeup you kind of retired yourself from the makeup world now she's done faces of cardi b johnny blaze i mean she's done a lot of different celebrity makeup like uh tammy rivera with you being such on a high status with the makeup, what would make you want to give it all up? Well, because I felt like um, I just kind of lost the drive for it because I was doing so many things. Like I would, at first I was, it was only makeup. Like I was working at Mac, that was just my only focus. My main goal was like moving up at Mac. So I moved up with Mac. I was at, um, I got all the certifications that you need as an artist. And then I started doing like celebrity makeup and stuff on a Saturday doing YouTube videos and then like trying to maintain my Instagram. It was just too much. And I enjoyed not being so much like on call, like being on my own time. I didn't like having to be like here at a certain time to do this. I just 
I felt like I serviced enough. And I felt like now I'm like, okay, now I want somebody to do my makeup. Do you think that um, <laughs> being stretched so much made you kind of like lose the love for it? Mm. Potentially? Like, no. I mean, because I still, every now and again, like, I will get bored and do like somebody's makeup. But um, as far as like doing my own makeup, I do still enjoy like making YouTube videos and tutorials for Instagram and stuff like that. But as far as like doing other people's makeup, if I want to do it, then yeah, but I don't want to have to feel like I have to do it. And then there's so many upcoming artists in Louisville that I want everybody else to have a chance to feel what I feel. You know, like getting a chance to do this person's makeup, getting a chance to do that person's makeup. So I didn't want to be the one doing everything. I'm like, okay, right. I have my time. It's time for somebody else You're to take the it. torch. Yeah, you know, I'm like... Selfless. It's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, and there are so many amazing, talented makeup artists in Louisville. Mm -hmm. Like so many. So makeup. Yeah. At one point, being your passion, what is now your passion? What if you could do it every single day? What would it be? So I actually do it now. Like just literally monetizing my life. Like um, just inspiring. I feel like a lot of people look up to me. And I have big shoes to fill, so that is very important to me to continue to create, to inspire, and not to create to... I'm not posting this to be like, ooh, look what I'm doing, or look what I got. I'm posting this to show you that I am 28 years old. I started when I was 20. I was married, had a kid, got divorced, like went through all of that. Um, we did not grow up rich. Um, <laughs> we had to struggle, so... Um, you know, just letting people know, like, when, no matter where you come from, you can make it if you have the vision and the right people around you. Yes. So that's what I want to put out. That's, like, what my main goal is, and that's what I love to do. I love to inspire people to do better and to find themselves and to just live. That's amazing. Yeah. You are inspiring, though. Like, you're younger than me. I've seen you grow up a little bit. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And, um... You, you do so much, and I learn a lot from you via Erica because you teach her a lot. And you're younger than <coughs> us. She's inspiring, y'all. She knows a lot. She's got a big old head of knowledge with Mary. She's, She's always hard. willing to kind of like, as long as she knows you're serious about it and that you're going to take what she tells you serious, she's willing to like give it to you Absolutely. so you can learn and grow. Like, it's amazing. And, and she's practiced like she's so positive now. Not that she was negative at any point, but like she literally is so positive and that it rubs off on to me because there was one point where I was just like a negative ball of energy and she's now turned it around to where now instead of me being negative, I take it and turn it into positive. So I, I thank her for that because I, and it's rubbed off on me and so now I've rubbed off on my friend and we both we practice yeah. it together we sage um so just a revolving we, door yeah and yeah. it's just like when you walk into her place where she you know resides where she lives you can just feel it's just it's just peaceful you know it's just it's it's amazing and she's a, an amazing person like even I learned from her you know and it's my daughter so you know. <laughs> You glow with excellence, dear. <laughs> so, so uh, I know you said you got, uh, is it New York Fashion Week? or mm -hmm. Okay, you got New York, New York Fashion Week coming up, but uh, what else you got going on? So, I am back on YouTube, and I am back full-time now content Ooh. creating. So, with that being said, I have a few... Um, I really, I don't know if I can really talk about like the brands that I have lined up. Well, don't talk about the brands. But I have some work lined up with a few brands um, coming like March. So what will you be like? A, is it like clothing or kind of, makeup or what is it's it? It's kind of just like everything. Like right now we sit here doing this tea. I can just take a little picture like this. Like promoting tea or promoting the... Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's kind of like brand ambassadors. Is. Basically, like okay, face of the brand. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's, that's really neat. Yeah. So, do you reach out to these people or do they reach out to you? So, they've been reaching out to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I do potentially want to start reaching out to brands that I potentially want to work with because the worst they can say is no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I look at your Instagram page and I believe you're at like 56,000 followers. 58. 58,000. Mm -hmm. How do you build 
an audience like for people that are wanting to start you know instagram and youtube pages like what do you do to to get their attention so you have to excuse me first you have to post and be consistent and you also want to tag the brands that you're trying to get the attention of um also you want to have clear content like you want to make sure the picture's visible not too filtered um hashtags you have up to 30 hashtags you want to make sure you're engaging with the little followers that you do have because it's really not even about the following it's all about the engagement the engagement there could be somebody with 500,000 followers but only get three comments on their pictures and 200 likes but there could be somebody with 2,000 followers and they get 1,500 likes and 100 comments you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying if you were a brand who would you choose right. you know yeah. so it's really not about the following it's just about the impact that you have totally. and um how and consistent you have both you actually because yeah. I met <laughs> yeah I, um, I reply back I make it my business to reply back because without my people, I wouldn't be around there right now. So absolutely, you always gotta give back and acknowledge the people who got you to where you are. Yep. Why are you not drinking your tea? I'm I am actually it. drinking my tea. Um, <laughs> we're sipping tea with cupcake. I call it cupcake, but to y'all, she's Ariel. And my tea um, has a lot of dryness to it, so my tongue is over here being attacked. It's got orange peel, grapefruit peels, and something else. Lemon in it. peels. And lemon peels. So my tongue feels like I just lit a rock. But it's so good for you. And I'm going to plug him in because this is where I get all my herbal teas and stuff from. Help Daddy Wow. Oh my gosh. It's black owned um, herbal store here in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm telling you right now if you are sick, you need some tea, you need some powder, some pills, whatever, like it's all natural. And I can vouch for that because I was sick and she brought me some vitamin C tea. And when I tell you, my body was just like, oh, like it came to life. I was literally, yes. I was hurt. And health, she brought me it and it worked. Health Daddy Wow? Is health it on Daddy the internet wow. or is it only Yeah, so they, I think it's healthdaddywow.net mm -hmm. online, but mm -hmm. they have a store here in Louisville and <clears throat> and they're very knowledgeable on every product. So if you have any question about anything, they can tell you, break it down to you. So yeah. And you can actually go on the website and take a peek at some of the teas because uh, I believe, didn't you and I look at one point? I was reading them off to you over the phone. I think uh, you were telling me about it. Yeah, about the teas. So you can actually go on the website and kind of look at them also as well. So. Mm -hmm. I got me feeling good. You should feel good. Actually, you got us feeling good. We've been, we've been trying to get in yeah, she with her been. for a while. Yeah, she's a busy gal. <laughs> she's a busy person. That's a good problem to have. It's it not really is. Is. Okay, I'm not. Okay. I'm not a groupie in no form. I was sitting next to Stacey Dash one day and she was literally Who's like Stacey this. Dash? You know, off of Clueless. Controversial. Oh, no, yeah. Stacey Dash. Well, yeah, you do, but she's not going to acknowledge her. But anyways, I didn't acknowledge her either. So, I mean, I don't get like starstruck. With you being around as many stars as you are around, how do you not get that, oh my God, you're such and so, like. Want me to be honest? Mm-hmm. Dang. This is gonna. I don't want to say. I hate to sound. I hate to sound ridiculous. I hate to say it, but I feel like. I mean, I feel like I'm one of them. You know. You should. But like, if you around, they're just. I mean, they're humans. Just you know, people. we all are stars, <laughs> and I feel like I'm like okay, this is just a human with some money. I feel you. Some money and fame, and I feel like I'm right there with them. Hey, excellent answer. Right? You're gonna get that. I know, cause somebody's sitting right now, I'm like, oh my god. Guess what I birthed her. <laughs> no, but seriously though, I will tell y'all something about um, an experience that I had this past weekend when I was in Philadelphia. Uh, my cousin Diamond and I were walking down the street downtown Philadelphia and a girl stopped me and said, Oh my God, aren't you Ariel versus Cupcake? And I was like, yeah. She gave me a hug and we talked for a little bit and then that was it. But I was just like, I'm in Philadelphia, downtown, walking, no makeup on, hair's hat wrapped up a little bit, and somebody noticed me. I was like, God, right. why are you always playing these pranks on me? <laughs> no, it ain't pranks. Y'all don't know how to impact. Like, impacting people. 
Y'all don't know how it is being her mama. I, every time you turn around, they be like, I know you from somewhere. I'm thinking they're going to say Pretty Inky, Nerica Divina. <laughs> You're Cupcake's mama. You're Ariel's mom. That's Ariel's mom. I'm like, oh, I'm not Erica Divina. But yeah, I'm her mom. And then, and then I started picking up my phone. I'm like, look at her hair. Look at this. That's my daughter. She's always bragging on you. She's always I love my baby. Okay. She's very proud of you. <laughs> I love my daughter. Oh, man. So... Um, I ask more questions because um, I, I know more questions to ask you, and oh, you know, be <laughs> be don't really know, you know, she knows what you do, but you know, I know you on a more intimate level, so I know how to, you know, ask you certain questions. She's but, digging. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I think that it's an honor to be sitting right here having this. We call this an exclusive interview. We have been trying our hardest to get to you and we finally did it. So I feel like we're actually getting somewhere with our career because we're sitting here with Ariel so Moore. What the kids? So? Who cares? <laughs> what does that mean? I'm supposed to do this stuff. You don't have to. Yes, I you do. do. You no, know, you do. I have to support my mom. That's you right, but- your mom. What the heck? I know, but you're not obligated. You are a busy person, and you make time for well, us. Oh my mom! That's right, though, and I appreciate that. So, <laughs> yes. Because you only get one. She That's better. Right. I'm the only one. Nobody can take my place. I'm her headache. I'm her joy. I'm her all of that. I call her crying all the time. Mm -hmm. She can tell when I'm crying too. She's a crying cancer. That's what I call her. <laughs> oh. Cece. Cece. Oh, you cancer. made up a name for her? <laughs> I got a question for you. Yes, I am. What made you want to start saging? Um, I have a friend named Shatika Reed. We love you, Tika. Uh, and she is so like. She's another amazing soul. Woo! Tika's so zen and just like in tune with herself, and she's just like. I don't know. Like it's my dog, and she introduced me to like plenty of pet place. Tika's been saging. Since Tika probably was like in her early 20s, like 22, 23, like Tika, that's yeah. what she was brought up on, you know? And um, she told me about it and I did my own research, of course, but yeah, Tika, she... Yeah, now we sage. And I've also, uh, yesterday, is it, what is it, Palo? Palo, that is amazing. I uh, burned Palo for the first time with, with Barack How'd yesterday. How do you like this, man? Yeah. I think it smells like sandalwood. Mm -hmm. I think it smells good. It smells really it good. It smells way better than sage. Sage tea. Yeah. So that's why a lot of people say they prefer to um, do Palo instead of the sage. And she's now introduced me to crystals. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a tiger tiger eye mm -hmm. crystal. And I have a pink uh, rose, is it? Rose quartz. Ro rose quartz. And let me tell you, I was having a bad day one day. And I pulled out my um, crystals. And it just so happened I worked with a girl who actually is just like my daughter. And she walked up to me and picked up on my energy and was like, oh my God, I like you, I like your energy. And she like clung to me the whole time. Well, I pulled out my crystals and she was like, don't let anybody touch your crystals because their energy would go into your crystals and you don't want that. And I told her I was having a bad day and she told me to take the crystal and rub it from my head all the way down and I did exactly what she said and when I tell you my day got so much better mm -hmm. oh I, ca I carry my crystals everywhere I go in a pouch to protect them but I carry them everywhere how can you get crystals where can you I get I need to know that because like in there so, bad crystals to get like I'm afraid to go buy the wrong thing I heard no. you can't get things from like five below and things like that yeah so I wouldn't recommend a place like that but I think it's all about your intentions mm -hmm. Um, Cause in your energy and your energy, yeah. So I go to this place called and it's on Bargetown Road here in Louisville. That's where I get all my crystals from, and they are amazing in there. I love them. Um, but yeah, and the crystals are super affordable too. So I get my crystals from there. Sweet. Yeah, and a lot of people they think crystals they're like, oh, it's just a rock, it doesn't work. But um, it's actually it's it's, a, it's science too. I'm not gonna get all the way into that, but it's also um, it can also be a mental thing and my thing is is if you wake up in the morning and you wake up late and you let that affect your day like oh I'm gonna have a bad day you keep telling yourself you have a bad day you're gonna have a bad day but if you have a crystal and you like this crystal it's, it's like people who say oh I wear these socks for good luck it's kind of like that you know what I'm saying it's all about your beliefs and your intentions so um, try it it's great you should yeah. try it well, another thing also before we wrap it up, um, she's vegan. 
100% vegan. Um, how long have you been vegan? This will be my fifth year vegan. Wow. Yeah. What made you transition into a vegan? So, um, I watched a documentary called Forks Over Knives. And I was like, oh no, I mean, I, uh -uh, I'm not doing this again. So, from that day forward, I did not eat meat. Um, haven't eat meat forks so over knives forks really? over knives and that's not really that's not even the bad one that was just the surface of it like i didn't even go into the one where they let you know until i was already vegan and i'm watching this and i'm still like oh gosh but yeah forks over knives and i'm not even the one to put it on my kid's dad was the one to put it on and he fell asleep watching it and i'm up watching it and look at me now vegan but Five years later. Yeah. It was meant to be, so I was supposed to be vegan, but yeah. And you don't ever feel like relapsing? Nope. Sometimes <laughs> I think about um, seafood. I'm like, ooh, seafood, but I'm like... You never have the urge to eat a piece of chicken? Nah. Wham, bam, no thank you, ma'am. Wham, bam, no thank you, ma'am. I think I made that up, but... I think she did too. <laughs> but, uh, what about... Uh, what's the difference between <laughs> vegan and an alkaline vegan? Oh, alkaline vegans are literally plant-based like dr sebi i don't know if you guys know him he mm -hmm. is passed away now but dr sebi made a list of foods that you are supposed to be eating that your body can consume and there's so many things mm -hmm. it's a really that we're not list. supposed to be eating like broccoli i'm like Dang, i, I love broccoli. broccoli i thought it was good my but yeah there's so many things on there um i stopped eating it though for the most you part you cannot eat but I'm going to look that up, the difference of that Because it scares me. What is it? Broccoli. broccoli. But it grows. Like, how could you be Just afraid like of broccoli but eat meat? They like seeds on the outside and they say, strawberries aren't good for you either. Well, you know, bananas are supposed to have seeds. They're supposed to? Yeah, over in Africa, bananas have seeds. Mm -hmm. Do they really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, don't, they won't let you. You can bring fruit back from Africa, but you are not allowed to bring bananas back. Why is that? Because we got the fake. We got the, we fake got the clone. Game. The clone fruits and yeah, veggies. Yeah, this just ruined my life just now. I can't <laughs> eat bananas now. No, I'm still gonna eat bananas because I'd rather eat a banana than um. But that's scary that steak, we don't. That real bananas have seeds and we don't have bananas. But I've never had a banana with a seed in it. I've eaten a lot of bananas in my day. I tried to be vegan and it lasted for three months. It was hard only because I wasn't educated. So I went from trying to be vegan and I was vegetarian for like almost a year and I didn't know how to do that either. And I had to just start just, I went back. I don't eat beef or pork, but um, I do eat chicken. Your mama ruins a lot of stuff for me. Like, <laughs> I do not drink so milk. So She's ruined milk. milk for me. Now I think of piss and blood. And yes. there's a lot of things that your mama ruins for me. And I have to thank you personally. No, not me. ruining it. It's just making you better. Yeah, it's you're fine. correct. But it's just like, it, and it, it ruins the thought that for all your life you're told drinking or eating something that's good for you. And then you think of all of it that you've consumed. Mm -hmm. And how am I not dying inside? It's bad for me like that. Um, um, yeah. She was one of the reasons why I would like periodically slide in bacon. Although I don't eat pork, I would allow bacon. But when she showed me what they did to the pigs and stuff like that, like it, I don't know, like it hurt my feelings. So. Yeah, it's kind of sad. And I just thought about. I know this is a rare comparison, but I'm like, when I used to eat a chicken wing, because before I went vegan, <clears throat> excuse me, like I would say about five months prior to I went vegan. There was a time where I was eating buffalo wild wings and I can't eat chicken on the bone. I couldn't eat chicken on the bone oh, after a while. So I'm eating these boneless wings and I just thought about somebody cutting Amari's arm, making it a wing. What? Whoa. It just <laughs> <laughs> it's like cannibalism. So I'm now. like, I wouldn't want nobody to eat my child. I'm probably eating somebody's kid right now. Oh, this is God. probably someone's, a little chicken's kid that I'm. <gasps> Harvesting. Oh my gosh, you just got so serious with that. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I think about. I think way too deep. And I probably ate the chicken's mama and the daddy. See, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I think about. So I'm like, dang, I don't want to eat them. Now we're separating things. Yeah, yeah. I just put myself in the chicken shoes. Like, dang, if I was chicken, I would be so devastated. 
somebody came and snatched my kid up to go eat. <laughs> Seriously, y'all do the same. So do you feel better overall? Mm -hmm. Like you don't feel like you're missing out on anything? No. I when you see people eating hot wings and stuff. No. Was the body transition hard? Like, did your body like rebel at first? Like, no, you I had did horrible get crabs or mm -mm. no? No, I did get headaches. I got headaches. You got headaches like withdrawal for maybe like two months. Wow. But then, uh, yeah, it was like just like a you know how when you're hungry you kind of get a hunger headache. Well, when you stop caffeine, you could have had a headache for about a week or two, but mm -hmm. two months. Yeah, it was heavy. Um, I can be honest though, since I don't eat beef or pork, I have no, no problem with my blood pressure mm. at all. Mm. I was getting headaches for a while, I couldn't figure it out, my blood pressure was elevated, it was because I was eating pork. Mm -hmm. So, and, I, and my body doesn't digest beef, so that's why I can't eat beef. Our bodies don't digest meat, period. None of the, the human body just doesn't, but that's another day. <laughs> it is, it's a whole, whole lesson. That we could get that would probably further gross me out and yeah. make me not be able to eat what I want to eat today. So let's not. <laughs> but <laughs> I get enough from your mom already. <laughs> well, going back really quick to what all the things that you've done, um, you've also, aside from makeup, I've also seen you in like your, um, was you at on the cover of Essence magazine? You were I was you, in Essence. Yeah, in, in Essence. You were. The face of uh, what makeup was Cover that? Girl. Cover Girl and um, Revlon. Revlon. Like, how does that? How does that make you feel? Do you feel accomplished, or do you feel like it's still more you need to accomplish? So I always feel accomplished. I'm always thankful, grateful, and I'm just amazed at the opportunities that come my way. Um, and I'm always thankful for the opportunities that come my way. But I'm always like, okay, I did that. What? else can I do? I'm always like, all right, I did that. If I can do that, I can do this. So that's my mentality. Just keep them going. What's it called? The Mamba mentality. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. That's right. The Mamba mentality. Just, if you know you can do something, do it. Do it. Just that's do just it. That's just what it is. Do it. So, yeah, I um. Yeah, did I answer your question? You did answer my question. And see, y'all can't see it, but we're sitting in her house. And uh, it's a, a nice upgrade. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> well, she, she moving on up like George and Weezy. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I feel dirty with my shoes on. I feel like I should have left them outside. She's extra. <laughs> it's been a it pleasure speaking with you. Thanks, and Mom. I do Thanks thank you for allowing us to interview with you. Thanks, and um, again, tell the people how they can, you know, follow you and, you know, uh, follow you throughout your journey because it's a, it's a journey. It's, yeah. it's a and there's so much more to come. I'm so excited. <laughs> but um, my Instagram is Ariel versus Cupcake. So that's A R I E L V S C P C A K E underscore. And my Inst my YouTube is Ariel Cupcake. And um, I have a TikTok. It's Ariel versus Cupcake. I'm on TikTok a little bit, but my son Gosh, posts so videos on there. So um, if you like Amari, which a lot of y'all do. He's on TikTok, my TikTok, so yeah. I'm gonna have to tell the money to look him up because they watch the same videos over yeah. and over. He's on my TikTok and he makes his little dancing videos with his chain on. Malibu's <laughs> most wanted. I have a TikTok. It's uh, America Divine. I haven't been on it yet. My granddaughter, London, has. And I looked on there and it was a video that said, Hey, you there. <laughs> hey, there. I was like, uh oh, no. So I, I, I ain't made a post yet. <laughs> I can't see myself doing it. Yet. Amari keeps on taking pictures that I haven't released yet and mashing them all up together with music on them, posting them to TikTok. Oh. So if y'all ever want a sneak peek of stuff that I'm doing before I do it, look on TikTok. Oh, <laughs> Here's your leak. Dude, yes. Hey, and he be on the lookout for him because I'm telling oh, yeah. you, Amari, Amari. Amari is definitely um, getting into modeling for 2020, so absolutely look out for Amari. Tell you, dude, Cutie we blowing up. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again, and thank you for this uh, tongue, no, tongue, tongue tea, tongue numbing tongue tea. tea. Because it has you literally, said you liked it, Mama. I do like it, but my tongue feels like I've been licking a rock out of the concrete. It's I just want to know when you've licked a rock to know the comparison. I don't know. You know, how like you smell pickle. something and you can taste it. Like a battery. I feel like I've been putting batteries on my tongue. Ooh. You should do. You it. probably did that. She did. <laughs> 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 I can tell 
So you can't tell me y'all did not stick a battery on your tongue. I can say that I... You told us about that when we were kids and you said it hurt our tongue. You made us do it! You made us! I remember, yes! So now I made every one of them stick a battery on their tongue. Child abuse, I did it. <laughs> she's, hey, she's charged up. She's doing well. Look, <laughs> see what it did? Yeah, everybody having their kids do well. Everybody was doing well. Uh, <laughs> I got cupcake powers. That's funny. Alright, well, thank you for allowing this video. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Chit chat box out. Again, chit chat box with Nerica and Veronica. And our special guest. There we go. Thank you guys. <laughs> Bye-bye.